Obviously, what everyone wants to know about is something until I die. I had a feeling it would turn out the way it did. They made it look like I was a villain type thing. And... Yo, what are you saying, bro? How are you? I'm calm, bro. So I'm going to start off with, obviously, you grew up in London. Like any young kid, you, you kicked ball in cage, kicked ball in Astros. So what was it like growing up in London? It was school, then football, school, then football. Um, it was me and my brothers, friends, because of the cage, kick ball, until 9, 10, go home, do the same thing the next day. So I guess for me it was it was a normal it was normal growing up because my mum raised us all on her own for us. It was um, probably a struggle for her because she had to work and take care of us at the same time. But I think she did a great job. Mm. But all the guys, so yeah, I think we all turned out okay. So I'd say I had a good childhood. Would you would you say that obviously your mum? Like grafting for you, man. Would you say that that's that's kind of made you the player you are today? I say yeah, because the times where things got tough, I would look at her because obviously she's been through hardship and growing up, take care of us it was it wouldn't be easy. So I'd yeah. say she's strong, and that's that's where I got that strength from to keep going, to keep grafting. Going to your career now, you were at Palace for a while, and then. Onto mm. Fulham and then onto City. How how did that all come about? I was able to get a trial and get in. I spent a year there. Did well there. It was good. Had good good few good year there. Good coaches. Good good teammates. And then Fulham came in with an offer. Went to Fulham. Spent three and a bit years there. It was a good experience. Obviously, high level of football, and um, I learned a lot there. Good coaches. Um, good friends there. Obviously, I speak to some of the boys who set up for them now. So, yeah, that was good. And then between Fulham and Pat, uh, Fulham and City, I was nowhere for a year. I didn't have a club, so I was kind of in between trials and and just training and staying fit. And then I got opportunity at City when I travelled there, and. They didn't give me a scholar when I was there, so that's life. Sometimes I have setbacks, but I keep going. Mm. Um, and then from there, plays a game for City against Sunderland. Yeah. And I, I don't think I scored that game, but I think I played well. And I think that's where the offer from Sunderland came, and they offered me a good deal, so I took the opportunity to go there. You joined Sunderland now, and, and you were kind of going through the ranks, you, your name was becoming bigger. You were mm -hmm. in the relegation for a couple of times, so, like a couple of seasons yeah. on the trot. How, how does that affect you as a player, knowing that you're on a team that's getting relegated year after year? For me personally, it wasn't too bad because this life, I mean, there's always going to be setbacks, but obviously for the club and for the team, it wasn't the best situation. We tried to stay positive yeah. each game and each session, each day, and... Um, yeah, the gaffer gave us confidence going into every game. We worked as hard as we could and obviously it wasn't meant to be. We went down a couple of times. Yeah. But um, at the end of the day, all we can do is put in put in the work and if it comes off, it comes off. If it doesn't, then we just keep going and obviously it didn't. So that's life and I hope hope the best for some of them. I hope they get through the season and do their best to, to go up and hopefully they'll be back in the Premier League one day soon. What was the... Mm -hmm. what was the kind of vibe in the changing room was it toxic was 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 there like little rivalries in the changing rooms that people didn't know about mm -hmm. or was it just all calm um, it wasn't I wouldn't say toxic I mean obviously when you're losing games no one's going to be happy we want, we want the best for the team and for the club but I'd say we try to stay positive I mean of course we're losing games but at the same time you need to try and stay positive keep going and support each other because if we're getting onto each other's backs every every game, every session, every time we lose, then it's only going to make mm. things worse. You know what I mean? So I think what made us stronger from that situation was the backing from the fans and the manager. 
and his belief in that to just keep on going because things always turn around in the end. Nothing lasts yeah. forever. But yeah, we kept on grafting and yeah, then the situation we are in now, but I think things will change as, as long as they keep on going and keep staying, believing and, and pushing themselves. Obviously, what everyone wants to know about is Sunderland till I die. What are you saying? What do you think of it? <laughs> it was interesting. It was interesting. I mean, I had a feeling it would turn out the way it did. I mean, they made it look like I was the villain type thing. And I think from everyone else's perspective, I think it's a great watch. I think a lot of people were, were obviously interested in it. But for me, I mean, I knew it was going to turn out like that just from the way I left at the time. Obviously, I've got no hard feelings with anyone from the club and all of that. But I think for me, I mean, I did my best for the club. I worked hard. I stayed focused. And obviously, in the end, I ended up leaving. But I made my intentions clear. I wanted to stay at least until the end of the season. And obviously, it wasn't meant to be. So that's life. You move on. And I wish them all the best. Obviously, there's, there's stuff that weren't added in that mm-hmm. people know about. Like, like it's, especially how you had a good relationship with Jack Foster, manager at the time. Like, do you still mm-hmm. chat to him now? Have you spoke to him after the series? Yeah, yeah, I mean, we spoke about the series and, yeah, we had a little chat about it and obviously we, we chopped up a little bit. And, yeah, I mean, we both had the same things to say, really. We, we both knew our relationship with each other and how we both supported each other and worked hard and tried to get the best for the team and obviously things didn't go the way we both wanted but at the same time we still got a good relationship. You left Sunderland, you signed a a four and a half for Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. What what was the biggest difference that you noticed from playing in, in League One to playing out there? I'll say the attention to detail. I mean, there's a lot of different factors that you could probably that I could probably mention, but I'd say that's the biggest thing because obviously the, the quality is, is high in that league and there's a lot of talented players and everything's looked at. So every little detail from corners to positioning to how this player likes to play to how he plays on this on the on the other wing to just everything really and just the different types of teams you come up against there's always a different team that's going to cause a different problem so for me I mean it's a great experience for me to, to be playing at such a high level and it's something I've dreamed of since I was a kid so I'm glad to be playing to be playing in, in one of Europe's top five leagues and I hope I can continue to, to keep working hard and succeeding. Did it take you time to adapt? Were you, were you struggling at first or? Yeah yeah definitely I mean when I first got there it was it was a real shock for me because obviously, yeah, it's a big difference from League One to League One. But the quality of the players and and the, the strength and the power, speed, everything was just a different level. And I was I was quite shocked when I first got there. But obviously, mm. a month, two months, I slowly started getting used to things. I gained a good relationship with the players, with the coaches, and I started being able to stamp my authority in, in training and some games so that gave me some confidence and yeah I feel like I've, I've settled in settled in well now and I'm pushing on what's what's next for you when all of this ends and you're back at ball what's what's next for Josh Madra just back to Bordeaux back to the graft back to working hard and staying focused on what I need to achieve and listening to my coaches gaining good relationships with my teammates and just continuing the work, really. I mean, that's that's the next step. And obviously, this lockdown isn't a great, a great situation to be in. But what can we do? We need to just stay focused on the work that they've been setting us and keep going. Simple. It's been great chatting to you. I'm I'm happy you are where you are now, and you, I can't wait to see what's next for you in the future. Love, bro.